Children crush fallen leaves with their feet. They live at an orphanage near the capital, Kathmandu. School exercise books are recycled too. Already finished uh, writing and homework and not uh, use this year. New materials are made from old. The ground up leaves are added to this mix of water and paper. It's not exactly a high tech process, but it works. These are biomass briquettes. The orphanage is funded by private contributions and doesn't have the money for firewood. We need a lot of money to buy food and uh, to buy tree uh, just like a waste of money, uh, tree uh, and wood. And so uh, we were searching for a new soft tunes of a wood. So the briquettes replace wood for heating. That helps protect the local forest, which is an important source of oxygen and provides a home for many animals. If wood is fired, then um, it disturbs in the environment and the air will be polluted and it, the environment will be bad instead of um, peace environment. The orphanage is located near a brickyard, which burns through wood supplies at a furious pace. It's also the largest employer in the village. The brickyard takes up a lot of space. So do the farmers' fields. There's not much room left for trees. In fact, over the last 25 years, Nepal has lost about one quarter of its forest land. This orphanage is home to nearly 60 children. Nirmala and Suresh Kati care for the kids almost as if they were their own. The couple's own two children live here too. On the roof of the orphanage, there's a makeshift drainage chute for collecting water and solar thermal equipment for heating it. It's a high-tech solution that provides the orphanage with hot water. The orphanage recently installed two small units that contain solar modules for generating electricity. Now we can read at night and now we can watch TV. It's time for dinner. Sometimes they do have to use firewood. But the biomass briquettes provide enough fuel to heat two small cooking stoves. The briquettes are actually a better fuel than wood for several reasons. They catch fire more quickly and generate more heat. And there's less smoke too. Tara Sinjali is a widow. She lives at the orphanage with her two children but she also looks after Rupak and the rest of the kids. The children are hungry. Sinjali serves up dal bat, a traditional Nepali dish made of steamed rice and cooked lentil soup. Suresh and Nimara also provide the children with spiritual nourishment. This includes regular prayer sessions and singing. The orphanage is run on Christian principles, and the couple tries to reflect their values in their everyday lives. I try to be like a mother to these children. I do everything I can to show them a mother's love. Uh, we raise the children. We prevent them not to become a street children. And uh, we are uh, providing them good education, and we make them to learn and learn. These girls are preparing their lessons for the following day. It's not easy to study when there are 14 of you living in one room, but at least there's enough electricity to keep the lights on. The electricity comes from solar-powered batteries that store sunlight over the course of the day. The batteries power the lamps that the children use at night. 
Yeah. When there is no electricity, we we read on candle. Now now here is solar light. We always study. Here's another potential source of energy. The orphanage owns four buffaloes, and they create a lot of manure. There are small, user-friendly plants that will convert that manure into methane gas. They made uh, around uh, 50 kgs of uh, cow dung each uh, day. And if we can reuse them as a biogas, then we can have a biogas to cook food. The children at the orphanage lead active lives, and these new alternative sources of energy have helped them to expand their horizons. And they've learned new ways to work together to help save the environment.